Hey, it's the Tom Hartman University Book Club, and today we're reading from Robert Draper's book, When the Tea Party Came to Town. And uh, it was actually the original title of this book when it first came out was called Do Not Ask What Good We Do. And this is the only book that tells the story of how the Republicans got together the night that Barack Obama was being inaugurated and decided that for the next four or eight years, they were going to do everything they could to destroy our first black president's presidency. And so I'm reading from the prologue, and he's talking about how Frank Luntz had organized that dinner that I was just mentioning. Um, uh, he was very happy about that. The dinner tables were set in a square. This was at the Caucus Room restaurant in a private dining room. It was a little restaurant down at the corner of 9th and D Street. The dinner tables were set in a square at Luntz's request so that everyone could see each other and talk freely. He asked that Gingrich speak first. Gingrich was happy to oblige. And, you know, it goes on through this. Pete Huckstra said, so we're in the depths. And then uh, we get right into it. Uh, the, uh, the, they would take back that this, is, this was their plan. You know, what their party had done from 94 to 2000, what the Democrats had done from 2006 and 2008, the Republicans would once do again. They would take back the House in November 2010. Then they would use the House as the Republican spear point to mortally wound President Obama in 2011. They would do this and take retake the House and the Senate in 2012. Uh, they would do all this, but only if the American voter blessed them to do so. It made no sense they all agreed to attack Obama personally. He was too popular. Got to be about ideas, said Eric Cantor. Democrats now controlled everything and were already with a monstrously priced economic stimulus package showing their true colors. Given time, they'd screw things up as the GOP had. But, said Paul Ryan, everyone's got to stick together. Ryan, a 38-year-old Wisconsin congressman and numbers fetishist, whose shiny earnestness recalled an Ozzy and Harriet America. Ryan hated squabbling among conservatives, the paleos versus the neos, the socials against the moderates, and on and on for as long as he'd been on the Hill, which was most all of his adult life. Ryan had long sought to be the Republican Party's glue, pleading for adherence to principles and data. At times, he looked like the underfed, hollow-eyed child of alcoholic parents. We'll only, the only way we'll succeed is if we're united, Ryan told the others. If we tear ourselves apart, we're finished. But, he added, he liked what he was hearing now. Everyone at the table sounded like a genuine conservative. It was a place to start. If you act like you're the minority, you're going to stay in the minority, said Kevin McCarthy. we got to challenge them on every single bill and challenge them on every single campaign. That's Kevin McCarthy. Luntz viewed McCarthy as one of the Republican Party's emerging stars, an easygoing, unthreatening guy who understood that language and appearance mattered as much as substance. Nonetheless, the polar and media guru interjected a cautionary note. Uh, one of the worst per political performances I've ever seen, he said, was when the Democrats took over the House in 2007 and Nancy Pelosi shut out the Republicans and everyone whined about it. If any of you beha behave that way, I'll go on TV and hold you accountable. Luntz tended to get carried away, but everyone knew he had a point. Senator John Kyle began to focus on immediate tactics. He pointed out that Tim Geithner, Obama's nominee to be Secretary of the Treasury, had failed to pay his Social Security and Medicare taxes during his three-year employment at the International Monetary Fund. Kyle sat on the Senate Finance Committee, which would be conducting Geithner's confirmation hearings the next morning. The Arizona senator intended to go after the nominee. I'd like to hear your thoughts on the approach I should take, he said to the others. There was a pattern here, Gingrich pointed out. Charlie Rangel, the new House and Ways chairman, a House Ways and Means Committee chairman, hadn't paid taxes on his rental property income in more than two decades. Randall and Geithner would be wielding more power over how taxpayer dollars would be spent than anyone else in America. And then there's the web, chimed in McCarthy. There are freshmen who accept campaign money from Wrangell. They're caught in the web. McCarthy suggested that they waste no time smacking down the New Democrats for the tax ads. The dinner lasted nearly four hours. They parted company almost giddy giddily. The Republicans had finally agreed on a way forward. Go after Geithner, and indeed Kyle did the next day. Would you answer my question rather than dancing around it, please? Show united and unyielding opposition to the president's policies. Eight days later, Minority Whip Cantor would hold the House Republicans to a unanimous no against Obama's economic stimulus plan. Begin attacking vulnerable Democrats on the airwaves. The first Democratic National Republican Con Congressional Committee attacks would run in fewer than two months. Win the spear point of the House in 2010. Jab Obama relentlessly in 2011. Win the White House and the Senate in 2012. 
You will remember this day, Newt Gingrich proclaimed to the others as they said goodbye. You'll remember this as the day the seeds of 2012 were, uh, were sown. Well, not so much, but I'd say that this is when the seeds of 2016 were sown. Forgotten, or at least not discussed that night in the caucus room, was what had been sown in America by January 20th, 2009. That was the day the meeting happened, the day that President Obama was sworn into office. On that evening, while the ruling party celebrated in tuxedos and the minority party retrenched over steaks and red wine, U.S. unemployment rate had climbed to 7.6%, the highest such indicator of national misery in 18 years. Things could get much worse. Joblessness in America would exceed 8% the following month. By May 2009, the number would climb to 9.4%, and by October, to 10.2%. And it goes on. It's a great book. Robert Draper, When the Tea Party Came to Town.